The band Vertical Horizon would be a staple of rock radio in the late 90s and early 2000s. They would have a platinum record with several hit singles, but whatever happened to the band, that's what we're going to explore in today's video. Vertical Horizon would be formed in 1992 by two Georgetown University students named Keith Kane and Matt Scannell. The duo started playing music for fun and to drink beer, but it soon took on a life of its own. Scannell would graduate with a bachelor's degree in psychology at Georgetown and work in an adult daycare center for Alzheimer patients. He had planned on going to grad school and studying to become a therapist, but soon music took over. Washington DC at the time was synonymous with the so-called straight-edge punk rock movement led by groups like Fugazi during the early years of Vertical Horizon's formation. The duo would start out as an acoustical act, rejecting what was popular in the city at the time. Scannell would tell the LA Times, Fugazi was kind of the DC scene period, but we tried not to think too much about that at the time. We started doing the acoustic based thing right around the time that Hootie and the Blowfish came out, and it was heartening to see acoustic music coming back to the forefront. We knew that if we had good songs then we'd be okay. His songwriting partner Keith would come up with the name Vertical Horizon at a party one night, thinking it was the perfect name for that moment in time. The duo started playing coffee shops around Washington DC and became regulars at a small bar named Dylan's, performing sets consisting of covers of folk rockers America and Duran Duran. It was at Dylan's that the pair started gaining a steady following, but it wasn't a lucrative gig for the pair, who were called to the LA Times, we play for 700 people and we get 25 bucks at the end of the night. I then realized that no one's going to be nice to you, you have to get your own business in order. They did take a page out of the punk rock attitude of DIY. Scandal took it upon himself to not only lead the band, but he managed the group while also booking them gigs and marketing them, getting t-shirts and CDs made to sell at gigs. He would even try to learn everything he could about the music business, reading the Donald Passman book All You Need to Know About the Music Business. The group would release three independent albums, who sold a combined total of about 70,000 copies, thanks to homegrown mailing lists, drop-offs at record stores, and of course concerts. The band would catch their big break when Dave Matthews Band drummer Carter Beaufort would play on their 1995 album Running on Ice. He would know people at RCA, who he introduced the band to, and the label would sign Vertical Horizon in 1997. It was around this time that drummer Ed Toth and bassist Sean Hurley soon joined the group. As part of the band's agreement with RCA, the label would redistribute the group's first two studio albums, 1992's There and Back Again, as well as 1995's Running on Ice. In addition to their live LP, they put out 1997 titled Live Stages, while the band would retain ownership of their masters. It was in 1998 that the band entered the studio to work on their major label debut, Everything You Want. One of the label's first orders of business was to push the group to use more electric guitars on the album to make them more commercially accessible. RCA Vice President David Bendith of A&R would tell the LA Times, I went into the studio with them during an early session and I said, let's get some Marshall amplifiers in here and just go crazy. They were like, great, we've never done that before. They wanted to move on and try something different. In the same interview, Bendis would praise the band members, saying, we're talking Georgetown graduates that had grade A educations right down to the line. They had a lot of savvy early on. Matt and Kevin weren't just two guys out of high school bumming around coffee houses with guitar. They also had smart people in their camp they relied on who gave them good advice. Released in June of 1999, Everything You Want would sell 2 million copies stateside. The first single, We Are, was a modest success peaking at number 27 on the Modern Rock Tracks chart, but it was the second single, the title track, that would top the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Everything You Want would deal with unrequited love, with Scandal revealing during a 2010 interview, I was in love with this girl and she was just a broken person. She kept turning to everyone except me for love and acceptance and I wanted so much to help her. I wanted to be the one to give her everything she wanted but I couldn't. She just couldn't accept it from me and it was that pain that led me to creating the song he would say. In a separate interview, Scandal would tell the Chicago Tribune about the title track, revealing that song holds the dubious distinction of being the song that took the longest time to get to number one ever. The song also had a pretty impressive record, being one of the top five most played singles of 2000. It would be that success that made the band wait almost a full year to release their follow-up single, You're a God, which would peak at number 11 on the top 40 charts in America and appear in the Jim Carrey movie Bruce Almighty. This would be followed by the single Best I Ever Had, Grey Morning Sky, which would peak at number 58 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. 
Vertical Horizon would end a 13-year drought for RCA, who hadn't seen an artist of theirs go to number one until the late 80s. Everything You Want would end up going double platinum, selling over 2 million copies. It would be the band's humble beginnings that led them to have pretty stable behaviors offstage, despite their newfound success, with Scandal telling the Chicago Tribune, I feel like we're better prepared for what's happening to us because of that. This is not the kind of band that's going to be on behind the music because of their heroin addictions. We're very aware of what it took to get us here, and we don't want to mess it up. For their follow-up album, Vertical Horizon's perspective on songwriting had changed, adopting a more carefree approach, while also using the events of 9-11 as an inspiration, with Scandal revealing to MTV, a lot of the themes in these songs are about taking control of your life, and living it the way that you want to live it, and acting and doing and not just taking and thinking about it. It's really important in the big sense in a post 9-11 world to make sure we all live our life in a way where we feel good about it. But the band's follow-up to everything you want would run into trouble. Corporate reshuffling at RCA Records, band infighting over musical direction, and personnel changes all contributed to the band's follow-up, titled Go, being delayed until 2003. In between the time the band released Everything You Want and Go, RCA would undergo some major changes, seeing three label presidents come and go, before music icon Clive Davis finally became its setting president. Scandal would recall to the morning call, Clive just didn't like us. He probably didn't like me, he didn't like our music, didn't think we were worth spending time or money on. In a separate interview with the Chicago Tribune, he would perfectly summarize the band's lack of support, recalling, I remember walking around to seven different record stores that day and finding only one copy of the new album. This resulted in Go sputtering out, despite the fact that the single I'm Still Here appeared in the adult top 40 charts. In addition to issues with their label, Scandal would recall to Billboard disputes over the creative process taking place around this time, remembering, I was a very insecure frontman and if things weren't done exactly how I thought they should be, I got really frustrated and was extremely possessive of my music. Following the failure of Go, the band would go on hiatus for almost half a decade, during which Scandal would work with other artists, releasing two albums with singer Richard Marks, and writing a song with Daniel Powder called Come Back Home, which was used to promote the NBC TV show Chicago Fire. But after a few years, Scandal started to miss Vertical Horizon and brought the band back in 2009, releasing Burning the Days. He would claim the three albums starting with Everything You Want, 2003's Go, and 2009's Burning the Days represented a musical trilogy. Following the release of Burning the Days, Scandal remained the only original member, playing with a number of hired musicians. Echoes from the Underground would be released in 2013 and would be reflective of Scandal's influences at the time, including new wave bands like New World Order, Joy Division, and Depeche Mode. The album would be fully funded through Pledge Music, and the band's latest album would be released in 2018 titled The Lost Mile. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe, and we'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.